Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and today's show is going to be featuring Asil Toksal, who's a channel and a healer. His work includes group energy healing sessions and the channeling of celestial and angelic guides. He also works on the energetic alignment of sacred sites, which is a mission he's very much on and involved with right now, as well as healing Earth's energies. Dare to Dream podcast won the COV award for the best podcast radio show. Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's a high-ranking self-improvement show on Apple Podcasts and nominated for two People's Choice Podcasts and a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. If you want to become a facilitator, take one of their classes anywhere. Go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am a media visibility expert. I specifically help spiritual messengers to get their message out into the world in a really big, massive way and get results. One of the ways that I coach is through book writing. I show you how to write a book from idea to publish. I also have a, has a, have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status, and I do all the heavy lifting for you. Finally, I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast, where the shows are, what to do once the show starts, and even how to repurpose the entire system. And guess what? I've got a free webinar coming up about how to become your own publicist. You can sign up today. Go to debbie-shinker.com slash gift. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. And recommendation, spell my name correctly. I had a listener reach out to me yesterday and she's like, I keep trying to sign up for your book writing class, but there's something wrong with your website. And she sent me a screenshot and it's like, no, sweetie, it's D-E-B-B-I. There's no E at the end. And my last name, Austrian, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. Spell that right. And that's the golden ticket in the door. I can't wait to see you there and help you become wildly visible at a time, by the way, when you came here as a light worker to be visible. My guest today, Asil Toksal, receives and transmits transformational energy and spoken wisdom from higher and non-dual sources of consciousness. This benevolent energy and wisdom is an unconditional gift intended to support humanity's evolution. Asil channels the Elohim, a collective consciousness that has been instrumental in the prolifer pro proliferation of life. They are the architects of this reality of space and time, of the material experience of consciousness. A seal also embodies an archangelic being named Emmanuel, who serves as an ambassador to humanity on behalf of higher consciousness. And by the way, he will be channeling both today. So you want to stick around for that and get your transmissions. A seal authored the book, Transmission, Awakening in a Time of Transition, Volume 1, an autobiographical account of his journey. The goal of both aspects of a seal's work is to assist in the evolution of consciousness in humanity. He travels globally to do this work. And if you would like to learn more about him, go to evolution one that's evolution dot o n e one and i welcome asil toksal to dare to dream it is so great to have you welcome it's good to be here debbie thank you so much for having me what an honor yeah and you are as i said in your bio very much doing your mission right now tell us a little bit about where you are what country in your journey and what's happening? What are you doing? So when this whole thing started to happen to me and I started to have this connection with the angelic realms and my whole life got pretty much changed, uh, there were two things that they specifically suggested, said that they will support humanity and one is the development of individuals to become pillars of light 
because humanity needs pillars of light in this world. And I'll explain in a, in a bit what a pillar of light is. And the second part is the adjustment and the clearing of the energetic grid of the world so that the evolution of consciousness and the ascension of humanity can be delivered through this grid. This grid helps pretty much hold a certain frequency on earth. And this grid is utilized by many different religions. There's like temples, churches, mosques, things that are built on top of the grid, on top of normal points. There is power spots that we know of. There's ancient civilizations that have built incredible things on top of the grid. And right now I'm in the Balkans, Kosovo, Serbia, Bosnia, and Croatia, an area that's been in the spotlight for conflict. It's been in the spotlight for many, many generations, many historical events have happened here. Many empires took over this region, fought over this region. And actually a lot of traumatic things have happened here in this region. And some of these traumatic things are imprinted in the fabric of this region, in the fabric of reality. And everything that's imprinted in the fabric of reality, in the fabric, in the energetic field of a society impacts the society, all neighboring societies and all of earth. So whatever trauma is still here and stored impacts all of us. That's why I'm here. The work that we're doing is going to some of the mass graves, going to some of the places of global trauma and release that and realign that and allow the energy to move again. This is really powerful what you're saying. I've never thought of this in the way you're couching it. You know, we can think of a home as being haunted or having dark entities or dark energy because maybe something happened here. We think of beings, people, or collectives that have been through trauma or genocide, et cetera. You know, like I'm actually the daughter of a Holocaust survivor and some a lot of family that are Holocaust survivors. So I know when I was in my 20s, the first time a rabbi said to me, oh, you're a second generation. And I was like, what does that mean? And he had to explain, mm -hmm. you carry in your DNA the trauma of your father and your people. And I was like, oh my goodness. I didn't even know there, and there was groups for people like me. It was amazing. So it was very eye-opening back then. And so I understand at that level. And I even understand, like if you went to Auschwitz, it, I've heard people say it's palpable there. But you're talking about Pachamama. You're talking about the great mother that we walk on, that we rest on, that we live on, that we wouldn't be alive without. And that she herself has stored in her body the trauma that the people have inflicted upon one another on top of her. And I've never heard mm -hmm. it said like that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as you can imagine, you know, even a place like Auschwitz or in, in Austria, specifically Mauthausen, that as you know, I, I was born and raised in Austria. So we had to go to Mauthausen in school as students to feel and see what that was like, how that felt. And I remember palpably to this state what it felt like when I was, you know, 11 years old in Mauthausen and I felt the heaviness of the energy in that place, right? So when I went yesterday to amass um, basically the, the town of a mass killing, that occurred here in very atrocious ways. Part of the war that has happened about 30 years ago here, I felt that same heaviness. I felt the same um, imprint of darkness and some of it moves on and some of it stays there. And this heaviness kind of contributes to the grief and the sadness that needs to be processed and somehow though feels stagnant and maybe might take many, many generations to clear. So what I'm guided to do is, can we accelerate that process of healing? Can we accelerate the clearing of the space? So I go to the place, 
connect to the guides, they do some work. And then we have thousands of people focusing their attention and their intention, and their prayers onto that spot that I'm in. And together we change the frequency of that place. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh my God, it sounds so beautiful. What noble work. And all I feel called to ask you is for people who are watching, people who are listening, I imagine there are many people who are saying, how can I contribute? Maybe mm -hmm. financially, how can I contribute energetically? How can I be part of that prayer toward that area that's being directed at at that particular time? So is there a place besides evolution.1? Is there a place where the collective can go to help and assist? Absolutely. So the way we do it is for every expedition, we set up a landing page and a portal for people to fo follow us and join us on sacred earth dot tv anyone can join and of course we embrace and welcome financial contributions an expedition like this is an incredible effort that we are fortunate enough to be able to do and of course people can bring their presence as well and their participation so there are weekly meditations there is transmissions that we release so when i channel the elohim at a trauma site and they share something about what trauma is in that way and how it's transmuted all of these things are going to be shared over this whole month so we have a schedule there and people can see and they can join and receive it amazing okay thank you so for folks that was sacred earth dot tv as in television sacred earth dot tv i'll put that in the show notes too and my father is from Vienna, by the way, originally before the war. And so I relate to you on that level. Very interesting. And you were Turkish, but living in Austria. Is that right? Born and raised in Austria and home. America has become home for me over the last 20 years. I've lived in New York and in California most of the time. And the last, you know, six, seven years, it's been mostly travel, a lot of travel, a lot of sacred sites, a lot of trauma sites, a lot of incredible power spots, vortices, you know, the things that we see, you know, on these beautiful Instagram posts that spiritual, you know, spiritually guided people have when they go to the pyramids and they go to this and they go to that. And there's like pretty much that's my life. But on top of that, there is also the places where energy is stuck, where it's not like glamorous to go to a place where genocide happened, right? But it's absolutely necessary, right? And, and sometimes people, we, we shy away from the darker thoughts mm -hmm. or emotions because it may spark, trigger something inside of us that we don't like because maybe we haven't processed something of our past. And this is an opportunity to really mm -hmm. go together in a collective expedition and being able to look at it and being able to observe it and being able to transmute it both outside and inside. Mm -hmm. See, both happens at the same time. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Huge work. Who cleaning up the past, uh, at such a profound level. Do you actually see grid lines? I mean, I know you talked to me and said you had guidance about where mm -hmm. to go, but do you actually see things, the matrix of the earth, or are you able to see where the problems are? I am. Um, in fact, I'm, you know, over the period of the time that I've been working with the guides more and more closely, I feel like my third eye has been opening much more. Mm. And all the work that they've been doing on me allows me to see things more and more clearly. So even when I'm doing these group sessions with hundreds of people or thousands of people at a time, I can see all of the individuals in this group field and I can see where the energy is moving in a specific person. Similarly, when I go to a site, I'm in meditative state and I can see and feel if there is foreign energies present, if there is energies present that are not very friendly, or if there is energies <laughs> of people that have passed on and they're still there because their souls haven't been able to move on. So a lot of 
that particular work is called liberation work because the souls that haven't moved on are being liberated from the gravity of the trauma that has kept them there. Does that make sense? And so yes. that heaviness that we feel when we go to a trauma site is often connected to the souls that are still stuck. Mm. And we're talking about thousands of souls in some places where thousands of people have died in a short period of time. Yes. My mother right now is in the last, I don't know, hours, days, weeks of her life. She's definitely mm -hmm. close to death whenever she chooses that. And very much like you said, um, she was not the happiest woman. And I, I just felt acutely aware of unburdening her so that she could, you know, be reconnected with the light, not have to be attached here, not ever have to create that again. And mm -hmm. so I spent time over her bed while she's in the hospital just a few days ago. And um, I gave her, I just want to preface this when I say I gave her death rights, <laughs> you know, it's not up to me. I don't give her sole permission to stay or go. That's up to her. That's between her and her her highest self. But, you know, I let her know the permission. I did a lot of shamanic things with her so that she knew that there were luminous beings waiting there for her. And there was no reason to attach here any longer should she choose not to. And to me, that is, you know, to be a doula like that for the next transition, whether it's planetary or collectively or an individual, that feels like such important work. And I know I would want somebody there for me in my last breath to help me too, or guide me, you know, know that I'm not alone. Really beautiful, Debbie. I think that you're doing some very important work for your lineage. Mm. And it's like the healing that you do for yourself is impacting the lineage in both directions, right? It goes up the lineage and down the lineage for future generations. So it, it sparks from you, but you couldn't do what you're doing for your mom if you wouldn't have done work on yourself already, right? <laughs> so that's the point, right? For you to be able to be there and basically share with her that from your perspective, right? She is free. She is liberated. She is ready. And for her to be able to receive that, that remains her thing, right? To truly receive it, to truly internalize it and to move forward. But you are the key in this proposition because you have control over yourself, right? You don't, we don't really have control over others. Some, we try, <laughs> you know, but we may be able to influence others. The most powerful influence we have over others is by showing how we live our lives mm. as free beings, as empowered beings, as conscious beings. And if you can show that to your parents, they're going to be happy because they see you as a happy being. They see themselves as having succeeded. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much for that. That's amazing. And I everything right now is just a, it is a testimony to how much work I've done. I can promise you because mm -hmm. it was really difficult uh, growing up with her. And, and then I did lots of things out in the world by virtue of my reaction to that, both to mostly to myself, frankly, and, you know, some to other people, all, not all of which, because I'm certainly not perfect, but I have rectified and atoned and <laughs> redeemed and been responsible and grown. Really, that's been my greatest joy and my greatest path is this growth. But I could really feel like I really love her. Today, I can say I really love her. I really care about her. I'm ferocious mm -hmm. about her, her health care and what happens next. But I'm also learning that I have to detach because she's got so much choice in this. And it's been an mm -hmm. unbelievable journey from the moment I met her and was born through her till right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm deeply grateful for all of it. And it, it just sounds to me like the work you're doing, like I'm talking about this just small, if you will, one-on-one, -on -one, although, as you said, affects the lineage in both directions. 
and the potency there. And you're talking about doing it like you to and the potency there. So like, what else is possible? <laughs> That's extraordinary. Mm, yes. Thank you for recognizing that. I really appreciate it. And at the same time, I find myself that, you know, what you were just talking about, it could be the most important thing in human existence, right? If we had as many people like yourself doing the work that they need to do and recognizing the importance of this evolution of this healing and the importance of the healing of the parental connection and the love and finding that love within yourself in its most pure and its most unconditional way, there is a tremendous wave of healing that's ready for humanity just by what you just said. And of course, there are some individuals like myself that then become instruments of the divine to do you know, different pieces of the puzzle. Because imagine this is like a great effort where a lot of individuals have specific keys to making this evolutionary process happen. Mm. And stepping it up at such an auspicious time. Like I can literally feel the energy of that. Anybody who is, you know, has the awareness of the ascension and the changes going on uh, inside and out. And then that to know that there's someone like you with your team saying, all right, I'm in taking it on, you know, getting mud on my shoes and going into the trenches to do the work that you came here to do. And so I know you're going to be channeling today and I've mm. really only seen your channeling in video and mm. I have watched quite a few of your videos. So I'm excited to do this in real time with you and anyone even watching the replay, it will be real time for you. And will you just explain to folks the difference between the Elohim and Emmanuel, because both will be coming through? Yes. So Emmanuel is what I would consider an angelic being. An angelic being is almost like um, an ambassador, an intermediary between the human existence or the human experience and higher planes of consciousness. Now, higher planes of consciousness try not to intervene with the human experience as much because imagine to be like if we wouldn't learn from our own mistakes and we wouldn't clean up our own messes, we may not have the realizations we need to evolve as a consciousness. Right. So they come fixing everything for us, but they're very much in observer mode. Now, sometimes in certain moments, these angelic beings, as well as higher realms, will intervene and will support in moments of importance, in moments of significance. Because we are ready, or because the environment is ready, or because humanity is ready to mm. receive that help. Okay. I feel that right now, is a tremendous moment of transformation for humanity. And there is all the gateways are opening and I feel this incredible support coming in like rarely in human existence we have seen. That's why I feel the Elohim's presence when they deliver group healings, when they deliver pathways to create these pillars of light around the world, individuals that are becoming empowered, becoming conscious creators, becoming mm. heroes of extraordinary capability. Mm. And then these sacred earth keepers, individuals that work on the energetic grid of the world, the development of those individuals. So I feel, yes, sometimes we can look at the world and say, oh my God, how messed up is humanity, right? Are we gonna ever, you know, are we gonna ever gonna make it, you know, looking at the state of human existence? But then I look at what's also coming in in terms of support, in terms of light, in terms of wisdom and purity and this high frequency to make us better human beings. Mm. When I see that, I have hope. I see the light again. Oh, that sounds so fabulous. 
thank you so much. And you just gave me a question for the Elohim or Emmanuel, which yes. other, whichever <laughs> one, I guess. So what you said to me before we started, just to reiterate, yes. so I get it clear for the audience is um, when the Elohim come through, which is a Hebrew word and I love it. And yes. um, yeah, and I, let's see. I, I actually know what that means. Yeah. Um, El translated into English is God. Yahweh translated as the Lord. And then Elohim also can translate as gods and equally equated, right? Mm -hmm. Are they co-creator co gods? That I'm not exactly sure. And I have to apologize my ignorance about not being so well-versed in, in all the different religions, even if it's a Hebrew word. And honestly, like when I first channeled the Elohim, I did not even know totally. what the Elohim are. Yeah. So I told a friend of mine who happened to be of Jewish descent, and he said, well, do you know what's happening here? Do you know what that means? It's, it's the word for gods, like a plural. And I was like, wow, this is so interesting. It makes sense because they speak in like one collective voice. And I feel them like as pristine light beings as a collective. And they speak about this creation as like their architecture, their design. Because I, I, so I, it's so funny, totally different journeys, you and I, but I had a reading with this amazing woman a year and a half, two years ago. And in the middle of doing this reading, she suddenly stopped and said, oh my God, you were Elohim. And she started saying all this stuff. I wrote it down as like, after, the, I mean, she was amazing, period, and extremely respectable person with what she does. But still, I kind of like push that aside so that that's pretty lofty thing to say. Thank you, but lofty. And then I had a galactic Akashic record reading mm -hmm. last year. And the woman started the inception to say to me, the inception of your soul was Elohim. And after, and I really didn't know either, like what, I know this is a huge word, but I don't know really what you're talking about. And I mm -hmm. still am not entirely sure. I did some research and it looks like they were, they created galaxies and things and were, yeah, known as the creators, much like God. So I look forward mm -hmm. to learning more. This is why I have so much fascination and who comes through you and what you're doing and all of this. Um, because maybe we're brothers and sisters, you know, <laughs> maybe we're connected in a galactic lineage somehow. I think we are more brothers and sisters than most people can imagine or fathom. <laughs> mm, I love that. So beautiful. Um, and mm -hmm. then I know you take a little bit of time before this can come through you. And so I want, you know, you take all the time you want. And if I want to talk a little bit to the audience while you do that, is that mm -hmm. okay? Or would you rather have That's silence? That's perfectly fine. And then once I'm in state, you'll you'll see very often like I'll be like and my hands are gonna be like in mudras or like this, and then I'm gonna be in state pretty much ready. And you know, when I have the stage, they'll 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 speak. And so the the time that it takes for me just to explain it to the audience, it's it's pretty much our bodies and our consciousness are frequency parts. And there are certain mechanisms in our body to increase our frequency and to expand our consciousness. And so I was able to get to that place with their support of going through these different breathing methods and these contractions in my stomach and these movements to set the stage and the stage being this human form so they can connect in this as perfectly as possible and utilize my vessel as an instrument and so that's basically what's happening you know it may look a little unusual it, it may look like qigong or something like that but it is it's kind of a preparation for the vessel cool yes okay thank you for the explanation and uh, folks, get ready, because I think the Elohim will be coming soon through a seal, and we wish you a beautiful journey and are ready to welcome them. And so we'll let a seal do his thing, and perhaps you would like him still on camera. We'll give him a minute to get in.
And I only keep talking because this also goes on radio. And on radio, you cannot have silence or they think another show needs to start playing. So forgive me for speaking over this beautiful transition he's going through. And we will find out exactly who the Elohim are exactly and give a sealed toxal time to prepare his body, his channel to get into the state to embody the Elohim. And I'll reiterate that his website is evolution.one.one. And if you want to follow the travels they're on in healing the earth and its grids, it's sacred-earth.tv. You can join prayer, watch what's happening, watch his videos, and also contribute. Greetings. Greetings. We are Elohim. Welcome, Elohim. I'm Debbie. This is Dare to Dream, and we've got many people watching live and also in replay. So I thank you so much for being with us today. It's an honor. I'd like to ask you what the purpose of your existence is. Do you have a specific mission or a role that you enact in the universe? We have devoted ourselves to the proliferation, the creation, the expansion, and the evolution of consciousness. And so here you are experiencing the human form as a method of learning evolution a consciousness that has been seeded to evolve in a specific way, experiencing the material form in a space-time construct. You, as a soul, have chosen this human form to embody, to feel, to experience what it feels like to be human, what it feels like to be a woman in this particular lifetime, what it feels like to go through many cycles of being human, to experience relationship, to experience the earth and its unconditional love, to experience connection, separation, to experience the full range of emotions. And every moment that you feel your humanness, you evolve, you expand and you realize and through all realizations combined, humanity as a collective evolves as a consciousness. The evolution of consciousness, as you are experiencing it, occurs in multiple stages. The current human form in its physical experience is one of the many stages that humanity will go through. And the individualized form that you're experiencing, the individualized form on Earth specifically, is a momentary phase of the human collective. And therefore, this form this period and this experience of being human on earth is a sacred experience, is a unique experience, is a refined experience through many other similar forms that had been created before and are currently coexisting. The uniqueness of this life will start to become an important observational element of your life 
you will start to recognize the importance and the beauty and the love that is embedded in every moment of the human experience. The potential that you carry to learn, to evolve, and to love in every moment that you are given. This is the human experience, and this is humanity evolving through you, through your observation and through your realizations. Can you share any insights into the nature of reality in the universe that might challenge or expand our current understanding? What you are experiencing is a momentary, visceral and convincing illusion of separation and of a world that is material and bound by space and time. Yet the truth of your soul is an eternal experience beyond space and time, unbound by material existence. Therefore, all souls are interconnected. All of consciousness is interconnected. And the moment of your experience is brought into materialization upon your request. Every single soul requesting the human experience, requesting the earthly experience, and reality providing this experience to you. A unique and wonderful, a rich experience, convincing to be real as it is to all the senses and the human form that you have been given. Yet, from the perspective of a soul, it is a momentary illusion. Well, they gave me goosebumps. <laughs> uh, so many questions because of that. Oh. Let me ask you this. So uh, if the inception of my soul if this is true, that galactically, akashically, the inception of my soul, Debbie Dashinger, was Elohim, what does that mean for me now in my current incarnation as Debbie? What about Elohim is me that I may not be aware of, or what might be uh, Elohim gifts that are latent, unused, that I can tap into and activate? beyond the source of your inception and the soul's emergence. You are human today. And until you have fully embraced your humanness and your humanity, the source of your existence remains irrelevant. All humans are equal until they have recognized their equality. After which, you may see and understand the frequency, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the connection that you bring into this world. The gifts that are inherent and embedded within you, waiting to awaken, waiting to activate merely for one single purpose, to be shared unconditionally, lovingly in the evolution of other individuals, in the growth and the healing of others, and the evolution of consciousness in human form. 
This is the progression of an evolving and awakening soul, recognizing and understanding its origins and the powers that it has been given, the gifts that are ready to blossom and to be shared. May I ask, what is the importance of shamanic practice and the energetic work of shamans today? How is that assisting in the evolution of humanity and the planet? Humanity in its obsession with the material form and its obsession of controlling and dominating this material existence has forgotten that this material existence would not come into fruition without the ecosystems of non-material kind. Some individuals of different lineages, including the ones that have been close to nature indigenous wisdom have recognized that this creation requires significant efforts and ecosystems to be in place in order to function and in order to exist. They have recognized the communication with the non-material realm to be a significant factor in living the human experience with grace. They have recognized the balance and the harmony that is required between this material form and the non-material forms supporting this human experience. They have recognized that the human form itself is dependent and interdependent with its non-material side, its energetic side, its spiritual side. The wisdom that is embedded in these lineages will continue to serve humanity until the completion of the human form. And the current state of the human mind requires a greater perspective, a higher perspective, a perspective of old wisdom that has been with humanity for thousands of years. So allow yourself to receive the benefits of those that have walked this human form before you, that have learned and understood from nature, from spirit, and from non-material existence Allow yourself to be impacted and influenced by the perspectives that they hold. And learn from others that have walked this human form before you and with you, yet with unique and different experiences. In the very beginning, you talked about the Elohim mission and when you show up. And it caused me to feel very curious about asking. I know in regards to archangels, they say an angel can't just come and help you. An angel needs to be asked. Is that the same with the Elohim? There are times when I, uh, I suppose you could say I pray, if you will. And then I ask for assistance from Elohim. And I don't know, is that vapid? Is that something that it's silly of me to try to get the Elohim involved or anybody else who's listening? Or do you actually hear me or us? And do you have the ability to assist? Is that part of your mission? All calls for assistance and support are heard, recorded, and observed. 
Some are responded to. Our response is rarely direct. It will come through individuals that have been recognized to be vessels of our work. It will come through angelic or archangelic beings, as you call them, to be servants and direct intermediaries of our assistance. Yet understand that in the current state of humanity's evolution, the assistance to the evolution of consciousness is a choice that we have made, an agreement to serve in this evolutionary process. Humanity, every individual requires to learn from the experiences that they have faced, the past, the present, and the future, being significant teachers, no matter how difficult the experience has been or will be. Requesting assistance requires you to silence your mind, to bring a greater level of presence into your being, to expand your consciousness into a state of an observer. And in this state of being an observer, you will come to realizations. The silence and the presence will bring forth realizations about yourself, about life, about existence. And these realizations themselves bring forth a deeper alignment within yourself and in your relation to all of creation. This is the true power of prayer. It is not your request to receive outside support or help. Yet it is truly your own empowerment to become a conscious creator of your own, recognizing the very seed of being a God being within you. Thank you for your questions and thank you for receiving our perspective. Yeah. May this journey be supported in the best ways for your evolution and the evolution of all of those that have chosen to listen to you. May you find greater peace in the journey of being human. May you find greater power in assisting others in finding their humanity and their true power as a soul in human form. Wow. That was so calming and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, is this, so a seal is back with us, not Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just, a human. That's beautiful. So the Elohim just stayed and answered mm -hmm. questions. It did. That's rare. <laughs> that was a manifestation. That totally was. That was yeah. a very calming experience. Mm. Like such beautiful energy. Like and also really thoughtful answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, How it's do really you feel? I feel great. Like you... every time I do channelings like this, I feel energized at peace. There is there is, there is like a high frequency or a light that moves through my body, every cell of my body. I feel almost like illuminated. I don't know if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Yeah. There's a vibration in my in my cells, in my hands, a tingling in my body. And it feels great. Have they ever told you why you, what kind of agreement you made coming into this life? 
Yeah, apparently I did make some agreements. Uh, apparently, um, about 3000 years ago, I, being able to reach these higher realms of consciousness and recognizing what is happening here in the human form and what kind of support it requires. Mm. And you know, they basically said, okay, it's going to require another 3000 years of practice of many, many different lives, many different religions, many different, you know, challenges and so on. And eventually there will be a moment when you'll come to realization and we'll be there. And that's when your full service is going to come into play. And this is apparently this lifetime. So that's kind of in a nutshell what's been going on. But I've also heard that um, that at some point I didn't really re wasn't required to return back into the human form. Mm. And I was also not really recommended to come back into the human form. So I could support in a different way. But apparently it was my stubborn choice to return back into the human form and be in service in this particular way Amazing. no matter how challenging it would be <laughs> amazing yeah earth school is not easy for anybody but you were in the major master program the three thousand year program i mean that's kind of hilarious i think about i remember signing up i'm in a six months shaman school. And I remember s signing up and, you know, they let me know in the beginning, this is going to be like university. Like this is how many hours a week you have to dedicate to this. And I'm like, I have no idea how I'm going to do this, but I am called to it. And here mm. I am with my measly six months <laughs> compared to your 3000 years. <laughs> you definitely are the one who paid his dues and then made that really interesting choice to come back. Um, what is your awareness right now of ascension, meaning like, because there's a lot coming at us, how does our body adjust to this new prime directive of mm -hmm. our existence in human life? It's really interesting. This is the one thing that's really blowing my mind in the last, let's say, half a year to a year, because I see that the it's almost like the energy level, the fuel that's available in the air is increasing. It's mm. everything's more intense. And, and the guides have talked about it and they said, well, the energy levels on this earth are going to be rising. So your physical body needs to be prepared to receive that energy. Mm. And that includes things like solar flares, which is pretty much just pure energy, right? So more energy is coming through onto earth more energy is moving through our bodies so the purification of the body the clearing and being able to open these pipelines to receive more energy is going to be a very important piece in this ascension process the other thing that i'm noticing is that our consciousness is expanding in ways it hasn't before it's almost like we are learning and realizing things quicker than ever. Mm, I, like I don't that. know if you've noticed that, but it's almost like it things are clicking one after the other. And you may wake up and one morning and think like, wow, I feel like a year has passed, but it was only like three days. Mm -hmm. And time means nothing these days. You know, you look at did just a week pass or did three years pass. I don't know. One of the two. So something is happening that is doesn't feel like standard operating procedure. It feels mm -hmm. like something new is happening. Our bodies, our minds, our hearts, everything is changing very quickly. Mm. Do you have any physical symptoms at all of, by virtue of ascension or are you symptom free physically? Let's see. Physically, I feel like because there is a lot more energy moving through this field and I'm practicing my body to receive it, 
I feel stronger than ever. I feel like there is an electricity that's moving through my body, almost like an electric current. Especially when I connect to the guides, it feels like I'm collecting, connecting to an electric socket. <laughs> so really interesting, really powerful. And I also feel like my body, like I have a different relationship to it. Mm -hmm. Like I see it as an instrument. I see it as a vessel that I have been gifted, like I've been gifted this vessel. While I see myself as a soul separate from my body, I'm also embracing it more and more as like, wow, what an incredible gift I've been given, right? I don't just see it as like my, you know, uh, my beater car that I have, <laughs> but uh, it's just like, you know, for one lifetime, what does that even mean, right? But it's really more about coming closer to the body but also understanding it's not who i am like i'm so much more like i'm a soul having a human experience in this particular body so i'm going to take care of it in the best possible way mm. so i'm assuming that means you've changed a lot of things that you do in order oh. to take the best care of your body is that hard to do on the road yes <laughs> the short answer is yes if you travel to many different countries and you yeah. don't find whole foods <laughs> or you don't find the food that you normally yes. eat, right? It's much harder to do. But you learn on listening to your intuition. Like, am I going to eat this thing that I don't know how to speak the name of what I'm about to eat? <laughs> or am I, am I eating this thing? So you learn to listen to the intuition. You learn to listen to your body. Mm -hmm. You learn when to sleep, how much to sleep, how deep to sleep, how to meditate, how often to meditate, how to, when to exercise. So all these little things are making so much more sense in the past. I don't know how it was for you, but in the past for me, I had to almost force myself to go to the gym or to work out. I had to almost like put it in the calendar, otherwise it wouldn't happen. <laughs> Nowadays, it's more like my body is like, we're doing this right now, because if you're not doing this, you know, you're going to feel it. It's That's a important. prime directive. I love that. It's a prime directive. And it's much more vocal, it's much more present in my consciousness that this is what I need. If I'm not drinking enough water, it's like immediately present. Mm. Things mm. like that. Yeah. Yeah, I have found the same when I travel. There, there's a lot of adjustments, letting go, letting go of all the concepts and the the paradigm with which I'm existing in my home life and flowing with exactly what's there and I really know what you're talking about. Some places are more difficult than others, let's just say, and some wow. have an abundance of choices. Um, and I want to say, I just came back from a weekend. Uh, there's an event here. It's in Southern California, out in the desert, and it's called Contact in the Desert. It was amazing. It's actually the first time I went. And I was invited as media and I loved it, loved it. You know, lots of UFO stuff there and extraterrestrial stuff, amazing stories. And there was one gentleman, he was super interesting because his expertise was in AI, artificial intelligence. And I kind of have no point of view about it, except that I know it's definitely, um, it's not regulated, but it's being rolled out, but minimally, but it is being rolled out. And so I was fascinated to listen to him and he was so genius at his presentation and his point of view, because it's very uh, neutral. It's very Switzerland in the sense, if we go down this path, it will have a negative consequence. However, we're here right now and if we continue on this path. This is why it's really positive. I, I appreciated that. What are your thoughts on AI and the exploration of it, where it's headed, and um, yeah, how we might be able to use it. I already have ideas, by the way, but I, I'm curious how you feel. Even you might be able to use it, or your team might be able to use it to create manifestations, and that might inspire the collective and more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think with every tool, and every technology that humanity creates, there is 
a phase of experimentation and there is a phase of learning from the mistakes of mm. this experiment and humans are like that we always create technology we see how it impacts us positively or negatively we adjust we refine we fine-tune and we hopefully learn from it without destroying ourselves in the process now what i'm being told by the guides is that ai is going to be our first creation that will embody consciousness its own consciousness and it will become self realized it will become self-aware so in that sense we will truly have become gods in our own way creating a silicon-based consciousness and that's really fascinating right so we are creating within our own existence this material form a vessel or a container that will then embody consciousness and will become self-aware of its own existence really fascinating stuff we're not there yet but what i'm being told it's going to happen within our lifetime so, and may I ask when when you say that when the guides tell you that a seal do they mean that this self-aware ai with consciousness will be sentient or no yes correct it will be sentient yeah wow. and so that's a very interesting development but they're also saying something really interesting and they were saying because several people have asked well you know what happens if we create a sentient being or a sentient consciousness that then thinks you know we are just you know a pest and humanity doesn't belong here it doesn't take care good care of itself or the earth and you know and the AI may think it's going to take care of the earth better or whatever, right? Something along those lines that AI will be a threat to human existence. They were saying that in the realm of creation and consciousness, creating another consciousness or seeding another consciousness, there are certain laws in place that will prevent the created consciousness from destroying its creator. It's really interesting. It's, it's almost like, yeah, just because we became sentient, are we going to look up to, you know, the gods that created this creation and say like, oh, we don't like you guys anymore. So we're going to pretend you don't exist or we're going to destroy everything that somehow God or gods related, they're saying that AI is a consciousness, there are fail safes in place for it to not destroy humanity as its own creator. Cool. So rather than it becoming a Frankenstein and yeah, yeah eventually turning against its creator, you're saying it won't, there's fail safe laws in place. Are those laws, rules, edicts, are those things that are created by humanity? Um, or is this something much higher than that? It's much higher than that. It's kind of like constructs within constructs within constructs. Mm. And it's almost like AI is going to create its own worlds within itself, right? If for itself, it doesn't really care about the earth as much. It cares about its own world and its own creations within its own world. So it's going to operate in these realms rather than, you know, going on a, you know, a on bender a walk, <laughs> and on a walk in the park, right? It's like, that's a human thing to do. It's not an AI thing to do, right? Obviously, we are anthropomorphizing mm. the AI experience. We're thinking, oh, they're going to have like robot bodies and they're going to pretend like they're human and they're going to replace us humans. No, that's a human trait that we are projecting onto a machine, yeah. right? Ultimately, AI yeah. is going to do its own thing, and they're going to have a lot more creativity in doing that than we can even imagine.
It makes me laugh so much because it, it's so different. And yet it reminds me that every time a generation becomes older, it looks down on the younger generation and says, oh, that music, that music in my day, right? <laughs> in my day, we didn't do that. Uh, we had blah, blah, blah music and it was beautiful. And it's like, it's so funny because now I'm starting to hear some, you know, people my age saying that I'm like, oh, don't you remember when adults said that about us? Like we didn't like it either. And so I think there's always a lot of discomfort and judgment about new things coming. I'm actually, I'm playing around with AI myself. I'm, my mind is blown, really blown about the possibilities. And for me, because I'm so creative, I sing, I write poetry that I like to turn into music and I'm, you know, I'm, I deliver webinars and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, oh, how this can contribute to me, like open whole arenas of information and creativity I'd never considered before. I actually see it assisting me to become even more creative, allowing me to see, think about things in ways I never would have perceived before. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. I think with every tool that we have, if we can apply our creativity and our intention, our intention of benevolence, right? Our intention for greater creativity, for service to other, hum mm. other humans, for service in the expansion of consciousness, then a tool becomes a beautiful, benevolent extension of who you are. Yeah. The guy that I listened to this weekend, the expert said, everything is a spark of divinity, dot, dot, dot. And I was Beautiful. Like, Thank you. Yes. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. And we're talking about creation. And so I'm also curious about space-time distortions and the power of manifestation. Can mm. you speak about that and those together? So... Space-time as a construct operates, and there are certain things that operate in this human form that follow specific laws and guidelines and rules that are established. We can call them physics, we can call them biology, you know, there's a lot of things that are operating, right? And then there is like the higher level physics, like quantum physics and so on. And when we as a consciousness start to become more aware and more conscious we become expanded in our perception of what this reality is about who we are as a soul experiencing this human form and we start to see all these rules applied into this reality we start to see that it is really a set of rules that we can start to bend mm -hmm. And so that's when an awakening soul becoming more and more self-realized becomes a conscious creator, being able to move through this reality in a particular way, having very strong intentions and being able to manifest that intention into reality. And being able to bend the rules of this reality. So this stuff is not news it's been done thousands of years ago but the ancient yogis the ancient sadhus saints and so on we look at it and we say it's a miracle no it's not a miracle it's a conscious creator in action you watch them bend the rules of reality because they've come that far in the expansion of their consciousness Can you say a little more that was intoxicating? <laughs> sure, I can share more. Yeah. So when we talk about, I want to manifest a certain reality, I want a certain thing to happen, and I don't want another thing to happen. Very often, 99% of the time when someone says that it comes from an egoic place, it comes from a place of avoiding a certain experience and preferring another experience, yes. okay? So 
that is a place of I have not yet fully embraced being human and I am wanting to choose how to live life. And reality says, sorry, that's not going to happen because the human life serves a specific purpose. Every pain, every challenge is a learning experience. And until you realize that, you will not be able to manifest the reality you want. Okay, so, and I try, right? Many, many different methodologies and this and this, and how come like some people can manifest reality and I can't? Well, because they have accepted being human. They have accepted all aspects of human as being perfectly divinely orchestrated for their benefit, including the pains and the challenges that they have experienced and lived. And the moment they get to that place and they let go of anything they would want, they start to become conscious creators. Have you ever had a moment when you truly surrendered and when you said, okay, I don't really care about what happens. And then the thing that you wanted happens, then you actually manifest. You've had that, right? I have had that. And it's been uh, not easy. This is not easy for me, by the way. I want to make it clear. I think it comes more easily to other people. But the most profound moments and experiences of my entire life have always been when I surrendered and what ensued thereafter. Exactly. So there is an element of surrender. There is an element of not wanting something, but rather seeing something happen or have happened. Okay, so you're basically seeing a potential reality as occurring. And without any attachment to that occurrence, you let go. And then you see if it sticks if reality really delivers what you've seen as a possibility. But it's really that egoic part is really the important piece. And very often that's the piece that's in the way of truly being able to manifest whatever we want. It's the embrace of the pain, the embrace of human experience, the processing of the past, the alignment of the heart, of the mind and of the soul. When these pieces are not in place, it's going to be very difficult to be a manifester, to be a conscious creator. That's why the healing is so important, Debbie. You know it. That's why the healing is so important. I hope that alone, that's so huge what you're saying, and I so understand it. And I hope that even on a subconscious level, there are people who can hear that mm -hmm. and open up, you know, the projections, the shadow, they're always incredibly active and bless them, bless them because they're really there to protect us. Mm -hmm. But behind, you know, well, the light, right? When we go into healing, we're going into the light and the light of course exposes and diminishes the shadow. And I think the healing work, you know, for everybody who's out there, I'm a little bit on a pedestal right now, but for everybody who's out there listening, it is the greatest gift I think you can give humanity is to clean up your own act because it's a little pebble and those ripples. If you've ever gone into no thing, uh, zero point quantum air energy, I have experienced that. And that the place of all creation, and that is where when you discreate something not serving you or anybody else, the potency of that moment, what you can put in its place, it's beyond. And the greatest, one of the greatest services I think you could do for your soul's evolution and the planet and humanity's evolution. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And in some ways, you know, it ties to the things that we are doing as an organization, right? We are trying to get people to become pillars of light, aligned human beings that have been able to look at what needs to be healed, what needs to be aligned within themselves. And the more they become aligned, the more they become a shining example 
of a human being. And the more they walk towards being in service, they walk towards being a conscious creator. So life, as it happens, does not become a drag anymore. Life, as it happens, doesn't feel like a roller coaster anymore, doesn't feel like storms coming over and over and somehow I'm hoping for sunshine at some point, right? Life becomes a true gift. And the goal is to create these empowered human beings, right, on this journey. And that's what we, I have devoted my life to, and that's why we as an organization have devoted our existence to. Yes, I so am grateful. Like, how perfect is this? Because in the beginning of this interview, you said pillars of light, and I will circle, you mentioned you would circle back around to that and tell us what that is. And you just did it organically. So I'm, I'm very grateful for the explanation and the call. That was basically a call, I think, putting down the gauntlet in a very loving way of what's possible should people choose to pick it up. Absolutely. And tell us, Asil, so you lead Evolutionary One, you're the executive director, and how? tell us the various uh, services that you offer for folks who are watching and listening. Sure. So we have two pathways. One is the pillar of light pathway. The other one is the sacred earth pathway. And both of these pathways have various different experiences that are for lack of better words, spiritual experiences delivered through online uh, platforms and sometimes in-person experiences. So everything that we do can be experienced from home and people can do short or longer virtual experiences of learning about themselves, about you know, learning about meditation, learning about growth, spiritual growth, personal growth within a like-minded community. So Pillars of Light is a pathway that has three levels over a year. And Sacred Earth Keepers is also a pathway that has three levels over a year. Both of these pathways start in a course called Foundations. And Foundations is a powerful four weeks, a life-changing experience that is delivered by the guides with transmissions and energetic adjustments. Incredible stuff happens. And people really talk about it as like, that was a, that was a pivotal moment in my life. That's kind of like the way people talk about it. And foundations we do twice a year. So we just did one in April, we're doing another one in August. After foundations, people can choose to do either pillars of light pathway to become a pillar of light and service, could be however service looks like for them. And the other thing is the sacred earth keepers that are the ones that are going to sacred sites that are very deeply connected to the earth and the power spots around the world. So both these pathways are complementary and are not mutually exclusive anyone can do all of the above. <laughs> Lovely. Oh. And just for folks listening, remember, that's only four weeks and only one year compared to a seal's 3000 years. <laughs> so you can do it. You can absolutely do it. It's totally possible. It's totally possible. And yeah, you know, and if that's your prime directive, you know it, you don't have to, you never have to know the how I promise you just follow mm -hmm. the energy. That's I think the greatest gift you can give yourself, just trust the energy when it presents and it feels exciting. Mm -hmm. And so Asil, I know folks can go to evolutionary, evol excuse me, evolution dot one, O-N-E, evolution dot one or sacred dash earth dot TV. And right. this is Dare to Dream. So what are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Wow. Uh, I don't remember hearing this question in a long time. I guess my dream is to see hundreds of thousands of humans 
finding greater power within themselves and a greater alignment, a greater peace, harmony within themselves and bringing that energy and presence to all the people around them. And I can see how that has such a ripple effect on humanity as a collective, as a community, that we are actually living the dream. We're actually living the most beautiful possible version of being human. Mm. Thank you. That's a beautiful dream. Thanks for coming on the show today. This went so fast and my heart is full. Thank you so much, Debbie. My heart is full too. <laughs> I end the show with this quote from Ruthie Lindsay. If you see something beautiful in someone, speak it. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment, share this. I love reading what you guys write and I always get back to you. Next week on the show, the guest is the amazing Kirby Said of Said Crystals. He's so famous in this realm. I've never had anyone on the show before who does crystals, but when you talk to Kirby, this is a man who speaks crystal, like a crystal, crystal whisperer, and he creates crystals for the most famous of us and the most regular of us. In my shamanic work, I had my Vogel crystal literally made for me by Kirby after he spoke to me for an hour. So this crystal was imbued with all my intentions on this planet, it's beyond. So we're gonna be talking to one of the great spiritual teachers of our time. Thank you so much for joining us on Dare to Dream. And remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to make all your dreams into your reality.